What's going on guys? It's Kyle with DTOM Knives and Gear. <laughs> Today I have a rather large unboxing. This is sent to me from a buddy who has already sent me knives, a big supporter of the channel, Bad Monkey EDC. Uh, on Instagram, he has been a viewer since basically the beginning. He's also a viewer of Kevin and Chris and Jake and everybody who is in my inner circle that I love so much. Um, he has sent this box of knives, not just to me, but to other YouTubers on a list, and I am just lucky one to get them first. So there's a bunch of knives in here. Uh, like I said, he has already sent me uh, knives before, and he actually, actually has given me a gift back the last time, which is this awesome bad boy. Uh, which of course is fitting to DTOM knives and gear, right? Uh, I use this knife. I'm not a huge slip joint guy. You all know it, uh, but this was of course special because it was a gift. So I use this as a backup blade most of the time. Let's go ahead and get into this puppy. I'm gonna, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to save the box, but we're gonna try. Get it off of here because I gotta send these out, right? So. So if I might be able to use this box to send out to other people. If I can, I can. If I can't, I can't. This is what we're going to try to do. Because I'm bougie like that. So, okay, come on. Ow. I pulled my beard hair. <coughs> Now nah, I won't be able to because it's all. That's okay though. <laughs> all right, so we have. <laughs> he thought he was gonna do this too. So, oh cool, he sent a list of everything because he's awesome like that. And I've got candy for the kids. He said he was gonna do that as well, and so much freaking swag. I am no, I am. There's no way I'm gonna be able to go through all of this, uh, but it's like stickers and candy, a galore. My kids are gonna love him for that. Let me put all this back in here. The package of the knives is nice. Put this back, yeah. Nice little bubble. I love this thing. It's like, can I keep this to put them back in? Because that's gonna be nice. Yes, I can. Because it's just tape. I love this. Awesome. <laughs> All right, let me see if I can get this out and about. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Woo! <laughs> what do I do first? <laughs> okay, so we got some pouches, we got some boxes, and all right, so I'll tell you what we're going to do. We're gonna, we got like three Tucson knives. I have had some Tucsons on the channel. They really are high quality for the price tag. Uh, out of China, we're going to go ahead and open up some Tucsons. This is the TS-116. The thing is about like zero tolerance, Tucson. The ones that they use the numbers, I can never remember which ones they are. So he, he actually writes it down because it doesn't say anywhere. So when he orders these, he actually writes it down in the box. Very, very smart man. And the TS-116 sounds familiar, so I'm not sure. Oh, no, I have not seen this one. So here is the Tucson TS-116. Uh, looks like it is G10 with a really kind of funky uh, milling pattern on it. That's cool. It does have a hole, but that is awful freaking close. Flipper feels like it would be steel liners, uh, loop over deep carry pocket clip, even though it doesn't go all the way to the butt of the knife. Uh, I don't care about that. I know some people will, but it does have some very big button head screws on that bad boy. Nice blue backspacer. Looks like also G10. And looks like it's actually got a G10 uh, collet, pivot collar there that's uh, Papa Blue. That's pretty cool. All right, well, let's go ahead and do a flip. All right, so, oh, that's a big boy. All right, so the, the flip, I was trying to not do, not to really give it gas and check out the detent, and the detent is not up to par to my standards now. However, it is a very good position for me to do the push button, and if you do that, it fires out. Uh, so, yeah, the, the detent might be light, but the, I love this particular kind of flipper tab because it's the perfect position for me to just press it like a push button and get it out there. This is a Kyle size knife. Look at that. <laughs> One cliff style blade that kind of comes 
Rounded there, very nice finishing on the blade. I like the grind lines. Let's see what we got here. It's a, kind of like a skull and crossbones on the blade. It's 14C28N, Max, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to read that. Some kind of design, Max Tonka truck. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it looks like. Uh, but yeah, very, very, this seems like, I mean, it's got a little dainty tip on it, but as far as a utility knife, this right here seems like it's going to perform very well. It does have a, you know, a decent uh, stock thickness, but it feels like it's pretty thin behind the edge. So yeah, liner lock. The action is really smooth, which I wouldn't expect anything less. Don't know what these are, but yep, n maybe not all of these will get full reviews. We'll have to see because I don't want to keep this box very long when there's a lot of knives here. So some of them may get reviews, some of them may not. If you see something that you absolutely want to see a review on, let me know in the comments because I will definitely do that. Because if, if, and if not, then I may or may not do a full review on some of these. I have been looking at this hole. I've got to see if I can do the reverse flick. Oh my God, why put a hole there? I can kind of get the thumb, but it's not easy. And there is absolutely no way for me to get my middle finger in there to do that. That is so fucking disappointing because it has a hole, but I can't use it. It's like tempting me. <laughs> uh, but you can use the thumb. It's just not very intuitive. So this one is definitely going to be a flipper only knife for me as, uh, as of the moment, unless I can figure that out. So there is the TS-116, or TS, yeah, 116, put that to the side. The next one is going to be the TS-132. All the numbers sound familiar to me, like I've had them before, but <coughs> that one did, and I never saw it. So nope, haven't seen this one. So the TS-132, this is kind of interesting looking. Look at that guy. Kind of a chunky boy. I like that. Look how chunky that is. With my big hands, that is appreciative. Now, it does have what looks to be not the greatest uh, pocket clip. It's a very thin uh, steel pocket clip. Looks very nicely, nicely centered. It's this has got to be this has got to be my Carta. It's not G10. Definitely steel liners. Big, full, thick backspacer, but they are uh, like a copper or a bronze color. I dig that, and so is the micarta i really dig the color and then of course the screws maybe he did all this himself maybe he heat anode everything i'm not exactly sure let's see if he actually said i don't see anything other than the list of the knives so uh see a hole oh okay so this one is definitely a strong detent let's see about this guy yeah that detent is nice um, so when I went to go reverse flick it, I actually slipped off a little bit. So I really got to get my finger in there. But once I do, that's a nice detent. I like this a lot better than the 116. And then of course with the flipper, let's see, can I actually fail it? Ooh, nicely done Tucson. I mean, they're, they're really known for, uh, I mean, all the ones that I've had have been very high quality. This was no exception. Nice blade shape. Really dig that. I love these little little swoops down here because I almost always, yeah, see that ergonomics right there where my thumb lands? That's very freaking comfortable. It has a an area there where I can get my finger in and even with my fat fingers, I feel pretty safe. It's pretty close, but it's not touching the blade. So that choked up grip is fucking awesome. Uh, the backed up grip is still very comfortable. However, with my bigger hands, right here my pinky lands right there on that point it's not like sharp or anything because it's nicely rounded off however i don't like this grip as much as i like the choked up grip again very nice grinds on the blade d2 steel on this one so this one is one of their pup their budget options but i dig it i really dig it especially because of that detent very nicely nice and smooth not fall shut but very nice and smooth yeah you can Suck that thing right in there. Whew, I like that. I like that a lot. I like the colors. I like the colorway. And the fact that I actually can middle finger, middle finger flick this one, it's probably going to get carried a lot more during this process than that guy. All right. That is the TS-132 from Tucson.
trying to get all this back in here. One more Tucson. This is the TS-208. See what we got as far as this one. Hey. All right, another Kyle size knife. Definitely a flipper only, but look at that green micarta. Ho oh, ho. I am digging that color. That is for sure. Uh, does have a lanyard loop with G10 backspacers look like. Still, it still feels like it has steel liners, uh, which is kind of a shadow boxed effect. I kind of dig this. See how the liners are sticking up uh, past where the scales are. I like that. Now this one is a different kind of more minimalist flipper tab. Let's see. It's got to have a good detent though. Oh, okay. Doesn't feel that bad. It almost got out there. Let me try it again. Yeah. So it didn't go all the way out there. That detent test is not really fair. It does fly. Oh, that one falls better than the rest of them. And it is dead centered. So doing the push button, it flies out. Okay. I'm really liking this one. Full size knife fits in my big old hands. Uh, it does have a what a, a flat choil, if you can call it that. It does. It is radius there. It's not totally flat. So this choked up grip feels fucking awesome. Uh, and then, of course, with my finger in the regular choil, still feels good, but I can feel that pocket clip. Uh, it is sticking up quite a bit. And then this backed up grip, I can feel it. I wouldn't call it a hot spot, but I can feel it. Eh, it might be a hot spot, actually, where it sits in my hand. In the choked up grip, though, not as much because my hand is actually off the bigger portion of where the pocket clip goes. But the pocket clip on this one looks about the same as the other, but it does sit a lot deeper. Uh, still has those stupid button head screws, though. I wish I'd get away from that and actually inset those with a flat head screw. <coughs> I'm really digging this one. What is the, the steel on this guy? This is also D2. Uh, yeah. Mm, out, of the out of the two songs, this one might be my favorite, even though the other one has a whole deployment and this one does not. It's very fucking smooth. I'm digging this one. All right, the TS-208. Yeah, that one's gonna, that one's probably definitely gonna get carried full show. <coughs> All right, so we got some more stuff. We got a CH-3511. I think I know what this is. I think this is the exact same knife that I purchased to send to Jake as a gag gift. Had a little bearded, uh, bearded sunglassed dude that looks like him laser etched on it with his logo. Let's see if I'm right about that. I am not. This is a totally different knife. I don't remember what that number was though. This is the CH3511, and it's also a you know a more budget Chinese brand. Kind of weird with the multi colors here. I'm not usually a multi color kind of guy. Feels like G10 for sure. Blue, white, and black. Um, I don't think that's layered. I think that might be painted. But I'm not exactly sure. D2 blade. Uh, this one does not have a deep carry clip, but it does, um, you know, the, just the steel bent clip. Also a flipper only. Let's see what the D10 is on this one. All right, so doesn't fail. Or it does fail that test, but feels like, I mean, it, it comes out. It just doesn't flack like the other one did. I mean, I can get it to come out, but it's very muted as far as the flack. I kind of like a flack when I have a flipper only knife. Really digging that blade shape though, look at that. D2 blade. Has their serial number on it. I can't stand it when people do that. How the air goes on this one, first impressions. Pretty good, don't really have an area to choke up on, even though if you had smaller fingers, you probably could. The jibbing on this is unlike anything I've ever seen. Not grippy at all, it's almost, it's like slick because it's so rounded, look at that. I've never seen jimping like that on a knife, uh, which doesn't really bother me. I don't need the jimping there to feel locked into the knife, uh, but definitely a full size knife. It just feels way different than anything I've ever uh, experienced there though, but not gonna provide you with much grip. Still, this one is smooth. I've I've definitely handled a lot of knives that were gritty at this price point, which I'm assuming what this price point is, you know, around 50 bucks or less. But very smooth. But yeah, the detent's just a little weak. So yeah, this one, not aesthetically pleasing to me with the colorway, but I know it will be for a lot of people. So there is the CH3511. All right. I'm going to leave this to last because I think I know what that is. I know I know what that is. The William Henry Fine Knives Model T10 in carbon fiber. Oh, what the hell. 
<laughs> Look at this little fishing lure. <laughs> That's what it looks like. Can I even operate this thing? Look at this little thing. <laughs> like, nice carbon fiber, though. Holy moly. Look at that pocket clip. Um, oh, tip down pocket clip. <laughs> I don't like to tip down pocket clip. Uh, can you? No, that's the that's the pocket clip is in the pivot. What the fuck? Okay, so this is probably a... No, it's a liner lock. So the pocket clip is actually underneath the, where the pivot is. Interesting. All right, well, it's got a thumb stud on one side. Let's see. So it doesn't really have much of a detent. doesn't have any detent, really. So this is probably made to do this and just slow roll out, but it is a liner lock, uh, very thin, kind of, you know, it matches the pocket clip as far as, you know, the anodization. I really like the colorway, this like bl blurple, uh, only has the liner on one side, so it's freaking light as hell. Of course, it's tiny as shit, um, but yeah, that's really sleek looking, I really have to say, I mean, but obviously for me, like... I mean, oh, I have a handle. I mean, it's a three-finger knife, but I mean, the handle itself, not that bad. I mean, for a little secondary pocket knife, yeah, it's a little fifth pocket knife. Maybe it's a little too long for a fifth pocket knife, but I don't know. It's kind of nice. It almost looks hand-rubbed on the uh, on the blade finish there. Oh, yep, doop, doop. There's your logo. Look at that hand-rubbed satin. That makes it even better. Very, very sharp. Can't really flick it though. I wish I could flick it. I mean, I know it's probably not meant to be, but I wish. Yeah, I can do that. I just gotta get behind it enough. But this damn thing is way small. <laughs> but yeah, this will be awesome to carry uh, secondary to some of these other ones because I, I love the way it looks. Very slick looking little guy with that really nice carbon fiber and the colorway. But that's pretty cool. Never handled a William Henry knife before. This will be the first for me. Got a couple of Kubi. Um, pouches, but these are, I don't think they're Kubi knives. All right, so holy mother of pearl. Well, the first thing I see is a big one. <laughs> Which one are you? This is an CPMS 30V. This is the Lone Wolf knives. And so the Lone Wolf is, where are you? The Harsey T3. So a William Harsey design, if I'm if I'm thinking right when he says Harsey, I mean, I'm thinking of William Harsey. This thing's massive. It is definitely a Kyle size knife. Look at that mother effer. Look at that. Oh, dude, this is another one that's tipped down, though. <coughs> Instead of tip up carry. That does me crazy. I've never carried knives in that position anymore. Uh, good God. This is a USA made blade. It's massive. Pocket clip is fucking huge uh, to go with the knife. Kind of a, so all the, all of the hardware is inset, like inset pretty deep. Look at that. Big old thumb studs. Doesn't, not really grippy thumb studs, but let's see if I can actually reverse flick this guy. Oh, such a heavy blade. Not without giving it some wrist, but God damn does it thwack out there. Lockup looks really late though, like it's all the way over there. Might be the way it, it is designed to be, which is not a problem if that's the case. Not a false shutter in the least. It looks like it's running on washers. So definitely a work knife, very horsey anyway. Uh, ergonomically, that's a freaking huge ass knife. Look how much it's even sticking out of my hand. Very, very comfortable. However, I think it would be more comfortable if this pocket clip was on this side and not right here where I'm grabbing the knife. Uh, because, yeah, I can totally feel that pocket clip. And it's not the most comfortable in the world. That is for sure. I really wish that it was on the other side. But other, aside that, yeah, because it's comfortable as shit in my left hand. And, of course, in any grip that you put it in, when you have this much real estate, that is cool. Got a little bit of lock rock on that. But it's dead centered. Just a beast of a knife. Did I say what steel it was? Did it even say uh, S30V? Yeah. So look at that shit. This is definitely a plastic handle though. Not a fan of the plastic, uh, but I do like the design. We'll see how this goes. <laughs> the fact that it doesn't really have a detent either is not my favorite. I mean, yeah, it's, it's like, it's very, very weak. 
but I can get it out there and it makes a great sound whenever it does. So I will definitely carry this because I enjoy carrying big knives, but this is big in every sense of the way. There we go. Who we got here? This is a 511 knife. Now 511 you can find in retailers all over. So they're not very expensive knives. This is the DRT. Uh, it does have a hole, but no detent. Uh, this is definitely a budget, looks like a slow roller. Fucking smooth, that's for sure. Liner lock, plastic handles, uh, and it is Aus 8 steel, which Aus 8, you know, it's just an older steel, older budget steel. They could totally do a better job and get better steel, in my opinion. I'm not sure who makes 511 products, but this is definitely a good slow roller. Uh, and look at that choil. So that choil interests me because it's a very odd shape. Not exactly huge, and I've got big fingers. So let's see. In the backed up grip, still a three finger knife. Um, but, you know, actually the way it's designed with this curve, not bad. My thumb lands on that jimping in this backed up grip. I could probably get used to that, which is saying a lot for me with three finger knives. I don't really like that. Uh, let's see if my finger fits in that. Motherfucker. Yeah, my finger fits in that thing. And this is a 100% comfortable grip. I like it. I like it a lot. I just wish that I could flip the damn pocket. There's a lot of these that are tip down carry. I am not a fan. But for the price this guy is probably coming in at, for somebody's first knife, just a little utility blade, you know, probably a good little guy. I've never seen this before, never seen this model. But there you go. Nice little EDC size knife. God, I wish I could do the middle finger flick and get it all the way out there. But, all right, there we go. Put these back in the pouch. This big monster. All right. Two more knives. Oh, this is the ruckus. All right, so I have actually <coughs> done a review on this guy. This is the Benchmade Ruckus. I really enjoyed this knife. This is definitely a cow size knife. This guy, uh, I mean, uh, Bad Monkey has... He likes big knives like me. We're, we're one in the same when it comes to that. And this is about as big of a bench mate as you will find. This thing is massive. It's great. The axis lock on this big bad boy works amazing. The thumb action works amazing. And then, of course, I can even do the reverse flick uh, with this guy. Love the jimping because it goes up really high. I have so many options with this knife. This one probably will not get another review because I've already done the review, but this really, really impressed me. And I don't think you can get these anymore, guys. Um, I may be wrong about that, but this is a very sought after knife from what I can tell. When I had that uh, video, people were uh, talking about this left and right because they had been looking for one, but really, really dig that knife. What else we got? <laughs> This is an HK, so I don't remember who makes HK knives, uh, but look at that. Captain America, I'm a big Marvel fan, not a comic book guy. Bad Monkey EDC is for sure a uh, big comic book guy, and uh, but I love the Marvel movies. Captain America, who doesn't like Captain America? Let's see what this knife is like, though. Look at that. Another tip down carry, though. What is with these... Brand's doing that. I just hate it. Oh, is this assisted? It's not assisted. Boy, that flew out of there. Yeah. I like that. Now, this is a wide knife. Look how wide that is. It's not very long, but it's very, very wide. Kind of weird the way this sits because my thumb, I do not want to hold the knife like this. This does not feel comfortable at all. I kind of, I want to do the hammer grip and the saber grip. It's not good for it because my thumb hits on that area. So first impression is not really liking that ergonomically. Uh, but in the hammer grip, it feels pretty good. Still, with that pocket clip being there though, I definitely feel it. But I wouldn't call it a hot spot. Very wide. I love the white width of this because it's still not very, uh, width this way because it's still not very thick that way. Okay, I think this is one of my first H&K knives. Was actually expecting it to be, um, got a little bit of a rattle there. I bet that's that lanyard tube. Uh, yeah, that's what that's, that's probably what that is. Anyway, I wasn't, I was expecting to be more of on the lines of that 511, 
But this one feels much better made than that guy. I don't really know what the price is on this. But uh, yeah, nice coated blade. Did we say what the blade was? Or does it say what the blade is? I hate it when they do that. And they did it. They do not have the blade steel anywhere on this guy. Which scares me. It really does. when Because usually when you don't have the blade still on there, that's never good for me. It almost means like it's going to be a shit steal. We'll find out. And this may or may not be one of the ones that gets uh, <coughs> a review because I really like it. Kind of a frag pattern on the scale, which does feel to be plastic. It might be G10. It, it's plastic. Uh, but I really like the opening action. That is for sure. Really, really fires out of there. So, all right, well, there we go. There's that one. Put these back in, and then I saved this one for last because you guys, if you've watched my channel, you know that I'm a huge Leon Maw fan. I love Leon Maw products. Uh, he does such a great job. Uh, I have quite a few of his knives and have, uh, have owned and will own more. So we've got, uh, well, let's do this first. Okay, so in the pouch, there's two slots. We're gonna go ahead and do this other knife before we get to the Leon Ma, which is a CRKT. CRKT has never ever impressed me with their stuff, really. Um, but uh, you know, they've got some hidden gems out there. This one has a slot. The fuck? It has a slot, but I can't reverse flick it. The fucking hell? It's like no detent. But I can't get, I can't get, I guess, the grip, enough grip to get it to the middle finger flick. Ah, there we go. Um, so maybe I can get that. Maybe I can get a handle on that. But uh, yeah, so it's, that's the only deployment. So it's either your reverse flick, if you can get it, which is hard, or doing a slow roll because I don't think I can actually get this to, yeah, the way it is. I can't do, usually with something like this, I can't do a thumb flick. No, so it's going to have to be a thumb roll or learn how to do that better. Yeah, liner lock, definitely plastic on the handles. Deep carry pocket clip, though, look at there. Steel. This is a, oh, this is a Leon Mall design, too. Executed poorly. <laughs> Leon Ma has a lot of his designs made by Riyadh, which obviously is one of the best uh, as far as, and one of the, probably the best as far as Chinese manufacturers. Uh, this execution by CRKT, not great, which is usually the case. I'm just not a big fan. Let's look at the Ergos, though. The Ergos look, I mean, it's a smaller knife, but it looks like it's probably going to be pretty good. Yeah, Ergos on this thing are really good, actually. Um, the pocket clip sits a little, like almost, it's past the end of the knife, and in that area, in a choked up grip, that pokes me back here. Never, never, never really does that, but it definitely pokes. That's a hot spot, like a, that's a crazy hot spot for me on that pocket clip. Dang, that's kind of disappointing, but it's, it's held in with a single, uh, screw too. There's not two screws, never had good luck out of that. Yeah, I'm not a big fan. Not a big fan of this guy. But that's okay. Because we have a real Leon Ma <laughs> right here. Oh. All right, this is one that I have not handled, guys. This is the Leon Ma Eraser. Uh, I I don't think I even handled this model at Blade Show when I got to meet Leon Ma uh, in Atlanta. I don't think I was able to... To do this now this one is definitely riot made as you can see this wonderful shred marbled carbon fiber whatever you whatever you'd like and a bolster lock which i love his designs when they do that this is a flipper and a hole appointment and then you have a little bit different than most of my leon malls as far as the pocket clip that pocket clip is definitely different most of the ones that i have have the ceramic ball in there uh but this one titanium definitely titanium inset into the uh, carbon fiber titanium uh, is you know frame lock bolster lock whatever you want to call it so I want to see if I can do the flick Bam! I love it when I go 
Oh, look at that blade. I love it when I can flick a Leon Maul. And this one is also a flipper. Oh, I tried to fail it. And look, that's how far it went. So the detent, though, with two of them, like whenever, like when I'm trying to flick this, it feels strong. When I go to do this, it almost wants to go all the way up. So on this, if I give it any kind of gas, it's going to fire. So I was able to flick it. So yeah, I just got to get my, with this particular hole shape and how close it is, I have to get it low. If I get it low, I can get this thing out. Dude, now this, this is comfortable. And the reason that it's comfortable, this scared me right here. This little area right here. I was like, mm, that's not going to be good. But where my hand lands, look, right on the inside of that because this handle is so long. So it is a very comfortable grip. If my fingers or my length of my hand this way was any longer, it would uh, sit on this. And that is sharper than I would like. So the fact that my pinky does sit on this side of that is good because if it didn't, it landed on that. It would definitely be a hot spot and probably wouldn't be very comfortable. Razorback jimping is what I call the uh, Leon Ma jimping. Wonderful grinds from, uh, from Riot as always. This blade shape is wicked looking. Definitely has more belly. M390. So I don't know what this one's probably a three to four hundred dollar knife, uh, maybe even more than that coming out of Riot. Uh, but this is definitely a cow size knife that I have not handled from the Amon. I'm very, very excited to do uh, to get this one in the pocket and try it out because I'm a hugely Amon fan. So, guys, that's it. That's what he sent me. We are going to be uh, doing reviews on most of these knives uh, coming up very, very soon. <coughs> so you will get a chance to hear my two cents on most of this stuff. And then we'll be going to another YouTuber. We've got a list of guys. Man, I love Leon Ma. This is just, I, I just love him. Uh, so I'm very excited about this guy. <laughs> Anyways, I appreciate you stopping by and uh, checking it out. Uh, remember, we have On the Edge uh, with Lefty, EDC, myself, Chris from Gaty's Gear, uh, and then, of course, we always have a lot of other people on. So definitely stay tuned for that. It goes between mine, Kevin's, Chris's channel. I mean, we do it all over the place. So just look at all those channels. Subscribe to all those channels, and you will know when we have the next On the Edge. Uh, and anyways, stay safe in this absolutely crazy world that we're living in. Fuck YouTube and Google. Remember, and we'll see you in the next one.